Oh, I noticed the uh, the boss system rattled loose my oh sorry uh, throw lever. <laughs> oh yeah, I used to have a a knob here that you could push over quickly. It clearly backed itself out. Did not there's have a Loctite on that. There's the recoil impulse. It loosened up my whole rail like two weeks ago. It's too much. Yeah, I mean, it's, Airsoft can't handle it. it's probably a skill issue just because I probably didn't tighten down the barrel nut as much as I should have. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another edition of the Zulu 24 podcast. Yes, we are still homeless. That's why we are outside in nature fighting off the PTSD from the sun from Perry, Georgia this weekend. I'm joined as always with uh, Jordan from Zulu Outdoor. And uh, today we're going to be talking about AMS Iron Horse and utilizing the boss system at um, Guardian Center. How was it? How was what? How was using the boss system at a mount site? <clears throat> fantastic. It's fantastic. It's always fantastic. It, you could use this in your bathroom while you're taking a shower and it would still be fantastic. <laughs> it's it 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 changes the game. It changes the game. And and that was very apparent uh, not only from my perspective behind the gun, but also players around and and, and even enemy players that you're shooting at. I mean, um it 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 just changes everything. And and you can only imagine, you know, a year or however long it takes for like more of these to be in the wild, you know, having it go both ways yeah. and, and then having, a, who knows, maybe a full squad has these. Well, like we did, we did AMS last summer at MUTC. And that was one of the things we noticed was you hear the tag grenade, you hear the Enola gaze, yeah. but it's not like other events where you get blank fire added to that. So did that add a level of not so much immersion, but it, it, did it change the flow of the game because now the boss system was there? For me, yes, but for everybody else, probably not. Um, just because there wasn't, because it was just me. Yeah. It was only one. So there's like one loud gun on the field, right? Uh, you multiply that, you know, times five and uh, it'll definitely change things. I mean, but, but let me back up, right? So, so AMS did a, did a fantastic job. The, the, their logistics are always, you know, bar none. Um, like getting through registration, chrono. Actually, Rip, if you were a uh, HPA guy, the HPA line was like a mile long. And we were like, oh, man, chrono's long. And then we looked over and the AEG guy, there was nobody standing there. So we just walked straight up. Meanwhile, it was the exact yeah. opposite yeah. last year. <laughs> it felt like there was nobody at the HPA line and the AEG <laughs> line was out across the parking lot. Yeah, dude. So we we got right up and in. And that was the first time I fired at uh, the boss unit uh, around everybody. And everybody's heads just whipped over like, what the hell was that? Um, and so I just started passing out cards. And, um, but anyway, uh, the logistics were good. Saturday's weather was hot because it's Georgia in August and, um, and humid. And during the safety brief, it rained and, and everybody, like nobody said a word about the rain because it was awesome. It was the best thing to happen at the perfect time. One of those rains, you actually needed that. Oh, for it yeah. saved, it saved some people for sure. Um, it was awesome. The rain was awesome. <laughs> and, uh, and then by the time we walked out to our starting points, the, the rain was gone. Um, but the cloud cover had rolled in, so it was still warm. I mean, humidity just in that area during that time of the year is always high. I yeah, think it was like just 80%. Sticky. Yeah. It was like 80%. It was, yeah. it was like you need to drink water. Whenever you're not doing anything else, you're drinking water. And um, and once you once you kind of establish that rhythm, yeah, your body kind of leveled out, and you were good. Now on the on the AMS side, because like if we circle back to what we talked about last year, were any of those problems that we discussed in the previous podcast still prevalent in terms of so the just aid the or the no all that stuff had been rectified. Um, they simplified the aid stations still work the same way. Okay, but the way they explained it was different, and so it makes a ton more sense. All right, like here's how an aid station works. An aid station can remove one bandage. Simple. After death. That's it. So if you have a dead rag on, you can walk to an aid station, take one bandage off, you're back in the game. If okay. you are still alive, you cannot go to an aid station and take a bandage off. It only works... When you're dead. When you're dead. 
That's super simple now. Yeah, and it was like, and I mean, if they didn't have aid stations, man, the attrition would have been far higher, um, simply because of the weather. I mean, the the only thing we were fighting was the weather. Okay. And um, the other thing they did was they lowered the number, the player count, and that is absolutely pivotal. It made a difference. Uh, <laughs> It was it was the difference. It was all the difference. It was it was the best decision anybody's ever made. Uh, you know, the last event I went there from a different producer who had eight hundred people there, and it was a shit show. And it's still to this day the worst game I've ever been to. Like, um, I, I actually felt like I wasted my money. Um, this completely, yeah, was, was the complete opposite of it. Because that was so for me. That was one of the driving factors. Because I remember we talked about it. You're like, they're only selling. 400 tickets it was like yeah but like everybody does that at guardian center they sell 400 and then they sell 800 yeah so i didn't i didn't want to walk into a game like that because i've been on both sides of it i played an msw game there in 2016 where there was only 400 players and it was one of the best airsoft games i'd ever been to but then you fast forward to a game with eight nine hundred a thousand players at guardian center it's far too many far too many and in the if you're going to Guardian Center, where do you want to play? In the buildings. In the buildings. Oh, all, all right. Buildings. So the so the the Mount Town itself, man. I looked at I I mapped it out on. Um, it's not big. No, it's like I don't know, thirty acres or something. Don't quote me on that. I can't remember. But it's it's not a hundred acres. No, it's not the largest Mount facility ever. It's just one of the coolest ones. It's very cool. Um. So. So yeah, man. They they hit the numbers right. Um. I'm not sure exactly how many people were there but um it wasn't a thousand it wasn't 800 yeah it it was it was a absolutely slap in the face noticeable difference you could actually maneuver actually we ended up taking the tree line and like flanking around i ended up behind the enemy team at one point um and in every building you looked at was doable yeah there was your 12 40, 40 plus people in every building yeah yeah i mean i i think the most i even saw in a building that we hit was like 10. Yeah. See, that would be way more fun. It was. And it, it allowed, it allowed players to maneuver, which created, uh, opportunities for both teams to have their little like Navy SEAL moments. You know, when you think about guardian center, you think about the flash banging a door and everybody yeah. going in there and flowing in there and killing everybody in there. And, and you could do it. You could absolutely do it. Um, and and we we did and we had it done to us because I mean when you when you have a lower player count it creates you're not always in contact yeah right so it creates times where um uh, what's it called Co- uh, complacency can happen yeah right um, and it happened to us we were on a second floor of a building for a little while because like there was a little bit of a like a back and forth. Yeah, there was a there was a building in between us and the other one, and so each team was trying to get into that center building. But turns out that center building was kind of poo poo in terms of cover and everything. Yeah, we didn't realize that at the point. Um, so we had been there for a minute, and you know we're getting a little low on ammo. We're talking, smoking, and joking, and then all of a sudden we're getting shot from a pistol. I mean, I had a laser. Ah, um, uh, a guy with a pistol came up the stairs and killed like fucking ten of us, dude. Good for him. Yeah. And then uh, one of our guys survived, but then the rest of the guy's team flowed up and killed us. And um, and we did that to people and we had it done to us. And it was it was fantastic. It was it was everything you wanted it to be in a mountain environment. Um, the capture points were in um, contestable spots like. Um, it, it was good. It was a good experience. And, and I'm, I'm happy that I went. Yeah. And Amos did a great job putting all that together. Um, now, in terms of the boss system. So, I scared the shit out of a bunch of people. Like, well, because I remember going into <laughs> this, like, probably a day or two after we got these, you're like, I'm going to ask Cody and Bo. And you you texted oh, yeah. them and were like, send them a video, and you go, is this okay? And they approved it. And then we kind of we kind of took a second and went, I don't know if they realize how loud this is. Yeah, no, it was pretty cool. I had I had Bo find me a couple times on the field, and he's just like, "Just shoot it, just shoot it." <laughs> I'm like, "Okay." If so you I'd, insist, yeah, I'd put it in God mode and just rip off a couple rounds. Um, but generally speaking, all the players enjoyed having it on the field. I would say so. Um, I would ninety nine point nine nine percent. There's always that one. There guy. was one guy. Um, he was a little. 
he was a little poopy because he got shot and um and so i was firing the boss i was we, it was outside we weren't in a building yeah. or anything and um we we're actually using porter john's as cover and uh so i was firing and his buddy who tried to do a dead man walk but ronnie checked him on that um love that yeah he did that that's one tried. of my pet peeves with airsoft he he tried and ronnie just shot him and uh so i was shooting it and that guy was like oh that's obnoxious and i was like you mean awesome <laughs> and then this other guy who was just standing over there was just this was his this is the greatest quote of this entire event i might i might put it on a shirt <laughs> It's so good because it's so perplexing. I I can't even. It's no longer June. It it yeah right. It yeah. It caught us off guard because we were just like, that's the most nonsensical thing I've ever heard anybody say. So anyway, here's the quote. The guy goes, "That's gay." Oh no no no. He said, "The boss unit's gay. I shoot real guns." At an airsoft game. As he's holding his fake gun. Yeah. And. And not to mention, I would argue, ninety plus percent of the airsoft community shoots real guns. Oh, probably. Like, yeah. Well, maybe not the community, right? But everybody at Guardian Center in Georgia for that event. Yeah, I would say easily ninety percent of them shoot guns. The majority of the people that go to national level events, not only AMS, but we'll even throw down like MSW games. If you go to games like those, there's a high likelihood you're into real firearms too. Yeah. Because right. it's basically the same community. It's just one is like, you know, hasn't, you know, stepped on the dark side yet. Yeah. Very soft. But um, yeah, that's gay. I shoot real guns. Like that was a flex. I shoot real guns. Fantastic, brother. Same. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Like like right now, we're not shooting real guns. We're we're playing with toy guns. And this just happens to make your toy gun sound really <laughs> loud and really cool. Yeah, dude. That's gay. I shoot real guns. <laughs> I so when you texted me that at like eleven thirty at night Saturday, I just sat there laughing. I'm like, <laughs> that's got to be the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Like, <laughs> out of all of the feedback we've gotten from the boss system, and we've memed some of them. Sure, that one that takes the cake. Oh, it's great. I, we, I, you can't even be mad at the guy. We weren't. We just laughed. Like, like Jojo and Ronnie, we just looked at each other. Like, really? Is that that's what he's gonna? That that's what that's the card he's gonna pull? Like, yeah. Where are you from? <laughs> like, oh, that's up there with uh. I posted the boss system in one of the, the Airsoft Facebook groups, and this guy commented, and he's just like, that, no, you don't need that. You just need a Bolt electric blowback M4 with an amplifier on the end. And then he proceeded to type out this whole story about this one time at a game in California. He shot it indoors, and his friends complained that they weren't wearing their contacts, and they should warn him before he shoots it next time. Yeah, I mean, you know, everybody's going to try to But we have clearly justify. pissed that dude off specifically because he's been copy-pasting it onto... A bunch of Zulu videos. Oh, good. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, I can I can assure you it's and louder. him, I can assure you and him that it is not. I mean, you just did the testing on it. Yeah. 120 decibels. Like. Yeah. So actually, we can correct that one now, too. Um, the cell phone decibel meter is obviously... We, when I made the video, I said, don't take this completely seriously. Take it with a grain of salt just because cell phone decibel meters are not accurate. Sure. And then I bought one. It showed up Friday night. So Saturday morning, the first thing I did was come in and test it with the boss system. We got like 119, 120 on the first shot. Yeah, that's that's about right. Yeah, that's yeah. that makes way more sense. Um, I kind of knew when it was peaking the mic on my cell phone shooting 9 mil, I was like, there's no way this is 100% accurate. So now we know, at least with the decibel system that we have, it's reading 120. Yeah, and, I, and I'm very doubtful that his... Whatever the fuck. Oh, his bolt, bolt electric blowback M4. I, I severely doubt it's. I'll give him ninety five. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that, that's like clapping your hands together, you know. Yeah, um, like using the decibel meter in the shop. It says the AC is eighty decibels. So, like, sure. Yeah, I'll give you ninety. But uh, but yeah, it was it was, it just came out of left field, and we were just like, because it was nothing but positivity. Yeah. Up until that point, like overwhelming positivity, people coming up. Oh, can I shoot it and all this stuff. Um, I mean, that's the same thing we've had here. Every person that sees it is like, oh my God, that's awesome. I love it. Yeah. And then, and then this just out of nowhere, this one guy, he's like, you got a fake 203 on, on your gun. <laughs> and I was like, just like, it only makes noise. I was like, you're holding a fake gun. 
I like, bet you the sight on your gun is fake. Like <laughs> made in China. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? My guy, if you don't like it, great. That's fine. But don't say it's gay and you shoot real guns. Like, man, you didn't think about that at all. No. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Yeah, that's not uh, a flex. That's just a weird yeah, one. Yeah. I was like, ah. But so then we we just we ended up actually flanking around um into the tree line. We had a big fight in the tree line. It was actually a lot of fun. Yeah. Um but uh, uh, in the city, though, with the boss unit, one thing I noticed is that, um, like, Sunday Sunday came around, and there was a little bit of attrition just because it was freaking hot. Yeah. Um, I think Sunday was hotter. I think it was, like, 96 degrees with 80% humidity. Oh, God, just, no. Oh, dude, it was sticky. violent. It was violent. No, it, everything. It was, like, sticky. It wasn't, it wasn't even sticky. You were soaked. You were just immediately soaked. Like, as soon as you got out of the AC, the sweat was dripping off your elbow. Um I'm curious as, of how uh, I got to reach out to uh, Phil from uh, Storm Riders. Oh, ask him how he did. And they're from Canada, so <laughs> they're not used to that. Yeah, holy cow! Um, so we had a lot of attrition for that. So the numbers were even lower, which allowed a lot more like maneuver. Yeah, and, and smaller um, gunfights. And so I was, I was basically the last man standing. All Smiggy's crew left, and then um, Ronnie and JoJo left a little bit early. And uh, I found myself behind the other team in a building behind their buildings. They oh, had, like, geez. They had, like, the five in front. And uh, I was just found myself behind them. And uh, so I was shooting dudes in the back. And I, every time I shot somebody in the back, I could hear their buddies go, where was that from? Meanwhile, I'm right across the street. And I'm not shooting from like deep inside the building. I'm shooting but from the, the down from the boss system is ricocheting off all the buildings. Yeah. And they're calling out like, I think he's in this building. That'd be like two buildings away. So I, I kept moving around yeah. and just shooting. And I did that for an hour. Actually, oh, yeah. I was actually hoping to get shot because I was like, okay, I'm, I'm pretty gassed. Like, and I had to drive to South Carolina. Um, One of those, like, as soon as I die, I'm done. Yeah. That was basically, yep. yeah. And, uh, Saw Gunner finally got me. He was just like, thank you. <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> I was like, thank you. Um, but yeah, so it, because it like because it's so loud and it bounced off all these buildings and stuff, they were having a hard time pinpointing pinning down. Yeah. Now I'm sure if you were further away and not maybe in that alleyway, you could get a general like, ah, he sounds like he's in some of these, but because they were kind of in the echo zone, okay. Like they were having a real hard time. Um, cause we've noticed that with some players here where like after the game, they'll come up and say, I heard you, but I couldn't figure out exactly where you were. Yeah. So I think that's just like, again, adding to the immersion aspect of the boss system, oh, dude, but in now in a mount site, cause like we use it in CQB, but way smaller scale there. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also the, you know, you're not talking metal or concrete. Yeah. It's you wood. Know, wood isn't you know going to bounce it quite as much. Um, but yeah, it was really cool, and I can only imagine if if we had a full squad, or even if just the three of us with Anthony, yeah, um, if we all three would have went, it would have been they would have had a much harder time. I had my my reservations against going to this game, um, but had I known we were going to have the boss systems, I probably would have went. Yeah, no, it was good. It was yeah good. that that last minute temptation of I know somebody already dropped out and their tickets for sale. Do I go? Yeah, and uh, it also makes breaching a building. A million times better. Yeah. Because you get like the initial, you know, somebody always throws, always throws a grenade in. Uh, and then you come in shooting. Yeah. I, yep. it just It just feels so right. And I, it's yeah. like, it's like, it, and it gets louder as you get deeper into the building. It's it's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. And um, you, you'll you scare the shit out of a bunch of people when you get in there. Like it has the effect, the desired effect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for newer players, I mean, veteran guys don't really care too much, but um, it's still fun for the end user. Absolutely, because as much fun as it is for everyone around you, realistically, the boss unit is for the end user. Oh yeah, it's great. Um, so yeah, man, the event went well. Um, uh, actually, I, I wrote this stuff down just just to uh, kind of drive home that lower numbers is better and creates yeah. more maneuverability. Um, so for the for Saturday and Sunday, I did. 36,104 steps. God all right. Damn. And I was not like hanging out. Yeah. You know, in one spot. We did 17.61 miles and did 198 flights of stairs. Um, Great and I, center stairmaster. Yeah. And I guarantee, I guarantee the last time I was there, uh, we probably walked two miles, three oh. or four. 
I'm trying to think. I remember that. We were trapped in the subway the whole time. Yeah, the subway series. Yeah. Our, our longest walk was Friday night, the infill. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. after that, it was... That was probably two miles. Get two buildings out of the subway, die, go back to the subway. Yeah. And that was last time. So so that just kind of demonstrates the maneuverability with the lower numbers. It's like you, you could actually go around. And, and all the tree lines and stuff were in play, so if you really wanted to... Like yeah. I, I did a 13-county kind of super flank by myself uh, through the woods and everything, captured some flags out there. and Because there were flag points in the woods, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, caught some dudes... There was like, we didn't, I didn't exactly know where their fob was, but I have an idea. It was like down this one trail. Yeah. And, um, but it was nowhere close to where I was. So by the time I was shooting these guys coming out of the trail, you know, they, I wasn't shooting them in their spawn. You know? Yeah. I was going to say, like, cause AMS has a rule about not yeah, shooting in the spawns. It's yeah, like a war crime. Shoot. Yeah. But, oh, they were well outside that. Okay. They, were, they were just, they were tired. It was hot. So they're going to take the path of least resistance, which mm. is the, which is the trail. Yep. And so I'm going to set up on that trail. If you keep using it, I'm going to keep shooting you. And and literally, they could take three steps off that trail and be invisible because it's real thick. Uh, yeah. Tree line's real thick there. But they didn't. I have a feeling I know exactly what area of the AO you're talking about because in 2016, I think we put our PB there. It was in like the southern. Yeah. And that trail leads down to where the entrance to the subway is. Yes, kind yeah. of. Yeah, that area. Yeah, I know that area or that. Yeah, those woods are thick. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, man, it, the I mean, the event was great. Um, how much ammo did you go through? Oh, that's right. Um. So I went through my loadout four times. I was keeping track because I I filled the boss unit up, um, on Saturday, and I didn't need to fill it the entire weekend. Oh, so I went through my loadout four times. I carry six mags, 120 rounds. So that's 720 times four, which is 28. Yeah, like right under 3,000. Um, and that's just the BBs that I shot. That doesn't include everybody coming up and wanting to test fire it and Bo being like, oh, shoot off a bunch of rounds. So I'm, I'm north of 3,000 rounds, and um, and I have not filled it at all. Actually, it's sitting right now with the gas that I had in it. And... Uh, Hey. And it's still shooting. So, um, I'd be curious. Um, so I don't know. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how many shots this thing gets. But we're north of three thousand easily. Hell right yeah. Now. Um, I think Thursday, I'll bring my laptop if you want to hook it up to it. Yeah, I want to we'll, see the round count. Yeah, we'll see how many rounds are on it. Um, because I've got to be pushing north of eight thousand. You're probably already over twelve thousand. Maybe. Yeah. Not sure yet, but, um, but yeah, man, no hiccups. It didn't really. I had no issues with it. Um, did you have to lubricate it at all during the game? Not during the game. I did it before I left, and uh, it probably needs it. I mean, it's pretty dry. Okay. But it didn't stop functioning. Okay. Right? So, um, I, at any point in time, did you have to adjust your gas because of the change in humidity from here to there? I did. Yeah? Um, so, right at the beginning, well, actually, the game hadn't even started yet. It was in our fob or whatever. Um up or down? Yeah, I went down. Yeah, that makes sense. I went down to three, um, and I, th- I think it was just it was just it was eighty percent humidity. Like yeah, like it's just there's more water in the air than there is air. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. Well, that was something you and I looked crazy. into. Is that when the air is warmer, it's less dense, so you need to yeah. degas it so you get more air into the system for the amount of gas you have. Yeah. But now that we have the decibel meter, we can try cranking it up to like eight or nine and seeing if there is a noticeable difference in the decibels. Yeah. You might be able to tune it. Yeah. Based on that. But you'd still have to tune it based off of it functioning properly. Sure. Cause you go too high or too low. It's not going to function. Yeah. But. You'll get to that point like mine where when I'm, when mine was improperly gassed, I'd get like eight, nine, 10 shots and then it would not cycle. Yeah. And then I'd have to adjust my gas to be able to make sure it would constantly cycle. Yeah. But yeah, I didn't have to, didn't have to gas it up. Didn't have to lube it up. That's um, pretty I dope. probably should, you know, like now. Yeah. After the game's over. But it's nice to know that you can do an entire event. I mean. If you got through an AMS game, you're getting through an MSW. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely for sure. And I, and I was wondering, like, I was keeping an eye on it. Yeah. And counting. So I was just like, um, you know, I, like trying to plan, like, uh, oh, I, I should probably go back to the FOB and, you know, refill this thing. But it just never showed signs of slowing down. Okay. It never stopped functioning. 
I'm also starting to notice you're getting rust on your screws. Oh, well, that's just because I, we, well, it rained and everything. Yeah. But. No, you're clearly using the hell out of it. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. And they're steel screws. But, yeah, she made it She made it just fine. Um, I actually ended up taping down my wires so that I see it that. wouldn't be a snag hazard. Um, While you were away, Anthony and I did more, um, like, R&D in terms of ideas. And we think what we're calling the DAV will apply to not only gas guns but, like, Sistemas. So we were looking at making, like, an external magwell that you would clip on. And it would have a sensor that would clip to your trigger that would actuate the boss unit. So you could hide the wires under the magwell. Oh, that'd be fancy. Yeah. You made any progress on it? So he started designing it. We're hoping to have it done before this pre-order run gets here. Because it'll fill two voids for Sistema, GBLS, yeah. and gas guns. You'll be able to do it. But then also, you could use that on an AEG to put it on your gun the same day. We do think the initial problem is going to be that because it's going to be a magnetic sensor... All of those boss units that are going to use the system have to be put in a semi-auto mode because it'll be the same issue with my Kythera in the beginning. That yeah. magnetic sensor will not be telling the boss unit to be in semi-auto only. So, so theoretically, you could hold the trigger back and yeah. just go full auto. And there may be an issue with the magnetic sensor where the trigger moving back trips it and the trigger moving forward also trips it. Uh, so we might have to, when we get the prototype version, which should be in the next week or so... Um, we may have to talk to Mark about making a specific firmware for that so that it would only actuate the boss unit every other time the sensor's tripped. Mm. So, yeah. back trigger pull, it would cycle. Yeah. Forward trigger pull, it wouldn't. Yeah. But we're also still looking at magnetic sensors because if there's a one-way sensor where it only trips going one direction, that would solve the problem. But it has to be small enough to clip to the trigger guard. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be cool. That would definitely speed up. Um, it would speed up installation. Yeah. But also then for like a Sistema, you wouldn't have to have the wires external. I yeah, know you're okay just, with it. Yeah, they would just go right here. Yeah. I know you're okay with it, but like I talked to a couple PTW users while you were away and they're like, I'm not going to buy it until there's 100% a system to use. I'm like, well, we're actually working on it, guys. So There is. That's the... There yeah. is. I'm just lazy and didn't route the wires. Yeah. Like that's... <laughs> like it, I tried to works, explain but... that and they're like, well, I don't think it could fit anywhere by the cylinder. I'm like, Maybe there's we, gaps, dude. There's gaps, but we haven't tried because also got your. You've also got up top with you. Mm -hmm. You might have to, you know, drill a hole there, but that's <clears> also <throat> a likelihood. But you could run it up and down in. It just it creates it creates issues, obviously, because the system it breaks down like a real gun. So the upper and lower have to be able to separate and and pivot, right? Yeah. So everybody's looking in the bottom, but you could do it up through here. Yeah. Um, the only downside to the the magwell adapter would be you would have to run an external battery, but now we know from mine, you can use a JST 7.4 LiPo that an HPA gun would use. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how long that battery lasts. Though. So, tried that this week, left it plugged in all day Saturday, and it didn't start beeping at me till Sunday. Okay. So, the Bosch unit is drawing a constant level of power in some way, shape, or form, because simply leaving it plugged in overnight did drain the battery, but it took being plugged in 9 a.m. Saturday at a full charge till about 10 a.m. Sunday, it started screaming. So for an MSW and game, and I would need two. Yeah, and that's and they're this big. Yeah, they're, yeah, you're fine. Um, um, I'd also be curious. I ordered myself one of the Titan ones because the Titan ones are a hundred ma more. Yeah, maybe the Titan one would last long enough. Are they smaller? About or the same size. Same size. Yeah, yeah about the same size. Hmm. But thinking about it with the Magwell version, we know from taking the handguard off their space here, so you could just put the JST battery in there. Yeah, you could. Uh, might be. A little bit of pain in the ass because you got to change the battery, yeah. yeah, on and off. But it would save you from having to put the battery in your rail or yeah, in a battery box. Anthony could 3D print a cover that has a trap door. Yeah, and we were fooling around with the idea of the M203 grip. So or putting the battery in the yeah. M203 grip. Yeah, if he because we already 3D printed one M203 grip and it's not the same spec. So if he designs a new grip or does the original one we were talking about where he 3D prints a whole new handguard that has the grip already molded into it, yeah. um, you could leave room for wire and a battery. Fancy. Yeah. There's a lot of ideas. We're playing around with it. Which just means that by the time they get here, we will have a solution for pretty much everything. Yeah. It's also really not that hard to wire them in. It's really, it's <laughs> not that hard to wire these in. I know we keep saying that's the hardest part because it, it is still the hardest part is wiring it in. Yeah. But in terms of 
applying it to different systems. Like this week, we're trying it on a Polar Star with an FCU because Anthony thinks you they have just, a diagram for that already. Yeah, you could just plug it into the FCU and it should be fine. Yeah, they they already have a diagram for it. Oh, you're saying through the FCU? Mm -hmm. Because uh, a lot of the newer Polar Star FCUs have an output port, so you could wire it to like a box mag for a saw. So oh, that that's when all it you done need. Cycles. It just that, depends on the voltage. Right. That's what we got to play with. But I have a fusion engine, and we're going to try it. And then Tokyo Marui recoil shock, because why not? Want to see if the recoil system of the boss with the Tokyo Marui either balance each other or cancel each other out. <laughs> yeah. Somebody in the comments that's in Europe said they did it, and it works with a recoil shock, but we're going to find out. Nice. Maybe it was one of the other units that got released prior to ours. Yeah, probably. Because I know RDX released like 20 units before they got to us or something along that lines. Yeah. Um, but we're going to try that. And then uh, obviously every other gun under the sun when we get a chance to. Now for everybody listening to, uh, we still got, what, a week left? We got about a week. A week left on pre-orders. And then once those pre-orders are done. Um, six to eight weeks. We're, it's about six to eight weeks till, the, till you get it at your door. Um, but in that time, we're going to be filming a bunch of wiring yeah. videos with Anthony so that all of this stuff can be out. We're going to try to hit as many platforms as we can. Um, cause there's been a lot of questions. Yeah. And, and that way you'll have a visual reference. Um, RDX does a great job with the wiring diagrams. Um, but I know some people aren't really fluent in wiring diagrams. Uh, sometimes it's better just to watch a video on how to do it. I'm so, the same way. Yeah. So we'll be getting those out too. Um, cause uh, we also still have to test the signal pad thing. Yeah, I haven't gotten those yet. Yeah, uh, RDX is sending it. They're calling it the signal pad. It should wire in between the battery and the gun connector, and then you could put the wires attached to that so you wouldn't have to go internal on the gearbox. Yeah, and it's, it just detects a drop in voltage, so yeah, we'll see. Which that could also work because then you could run on a normal AEG. You could just run the wire along the outside of the gearbox and out the front of the receiver. Yeah, inside the gun but outside the gearbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and it, it's doable because every G and G combat machine does their wiring like that. Yeah. So it's possible. Uh, everything's possible. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's super simple to wire up and the wires are actually pretty, pretty they're super small, thin. So. Yeah. Which we learned with mine. Cause I accidentally pinched my wires and mine caught on fire like two weeks ago. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Walking on the field and just put the mag in and all of a sudden my pistol grip is smoking and there's flames popping out cause my lipo short circuited. <laughs> um, be careful when you're switching uppers make sure you don't pinch the wire because that's what happens yeah <laughs> um, but we did have mine rewired and back up in the next like two hours after that it was just Anthony was busy so I had to do it myself yeah, yeah. oh man I'm still recovering Fuck. yeah how much water did you drink this weekend oh two gallons on Saturday and a gallon on Sunday Jesus and, uh, and my pee was still this color that's funny. When I talked to Tom from Amped, he referenced that too. He was like, yeah, Dave told me he was drinking water all day, but was still pissing proud. Oh, dude, it was bad. <laughs> Weird, but yeah. Yeah. I drove to uh, South Carolina to my buddy's house, and um, of course he wants to sit there and like drink beer and stuff. And the whole time I'm like, oh, this is my kidneys. Yeah. Like, I remember oh. after the MUTC game last year on Saturday, we were like, let's grab beer and go back to the Airbnb. We all had one beer, and we're like, never mind. Yeah. We have to stop. Yeah. Um, that's actually a good reference. MUTC was pretty hot and humid as well. Yeah, it was. Um, it was like, it was worse. Yeah. Was well, worse. that's why I asked about the aid stations because like, yeah, one of the problems we had at MUTC was every player at AMS is supposed to bring a case or two of water. Yeah. And we'd go to an aid station three, four, five times. There's still no water there. So they didn't have water at the aid stations, but they didn't need to. Okay. Um, because Guardian's a lot smaller. Um, the distance between your aid station and, and respawn. your respawn and even the front lines was... It wasn't the 45-minute was, walk no, back? Yeah, not okay. at all. Dude. And, and the, both fobs had plenty of water. Yeah. Well, I don't know about the other five, but our fob had plenty of water. So that was, the water wasn't the issue this time. And they had the U-Haul going around and everything. So um, they th that was it fine. It worked out. Yeah, that was fine. Okay. There was no, no issues with that. Because uh, that was like at MUTC that was our biggest complaint yeah yeah just because of how hot it was but um no this one was great uh, AMS did a great job the game Perfect. was fun the game was fun um besides that one guy everybody loved it yeah well love the boss unit but in terms of the gameplay like I didn't have any issues with hit calling like 
I didn't have anybody. This is my personal experience. I obviously wasn't everywhere on the yeah. field, so I don't know everything that happened. But, but everybody that I engaged with or or was engaged by was like pretty chill. Like nobody was no airsofty bullshit. None that I saw. You know, honestly, none that I saw. Um, and I, so here we go. Here's a good point, right? So Saturday, I can't remember if it was Saturday or Sunday. Doesn't matter. Um, I pushed out kind of towards the tree line and I killed these three guys trying to get into the city. Okay. And after I killed their last guy, because they all they were all kind of together. After I killed the last guy, the one guy, assumably the leader of this little group, politely was just like, hey, um, do you mind like getting an admin here? Because like we can't get out of our fob. Um, like we keep getting engaged right out of our our fob. He's like, I I know you're just playing the game and that's fine. I just, you know, like the way he approached it was totally like a human male adult should. Yeah. This does not sound like, no, it no, it was like, what? Like the politest way to ask about a rule. And he was like, totally cool. Like, you know, like they all called their hits and, and they weren't like mad at me for shooting them. They were just like, Hey man, like, Man, if you got if you, can you guys just back off or get an admin or something cuz like we really can't get out of our spawn right now. And um and I was like, yeah, I can. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to go find Bo right now and tell him about it. Um and I just backed off. That's like one of the politest. It was insane. Yeah. It was I, just like, what is happening? What is that's like that's like a preacher going into a Call of Duty lobby. Yeah, like it's crazy. It sounds like no ego involved at all. Zero. He he approached the situation exactly how every human male should approach. Like, just calm, cool, collected. He waited until the combat was done. Yeah. And then was like, hey, man. Like, and, and he didn't have teammates around. So it wasn't like, it wasn't like he was trying to talk to me so that his teammates could hear where I was. It was like everybody was clearly dead. Yeah, yeah. Everybody was dead. Like, the combat was over. Yeah. And, uh, and he waited patiently. And then was like, hey, man, like the way he approached it was just, I was, it was insane. It was just like, wow, this is how it should be. I expect. It's very strange. Yeah, I expect less of Airsofters. Oh, man. I mean, in terms of like, like. you shoot a kid at Fuel Depot and he complains you're shooting him in his spawn. Yeah, for real. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and, and, and whether or not, because honestly, I didn't know where their fob was. Um, I don't think I was that close to it. Actually, I'm pretty positive I wasn't. However. He had, you know, the way he, he may have had a valid point. Maybe, right? Yeah. And and because of the way he approached it, um, I did back off and I went to go look for um Bo, uh, but then I got in a different fight. My fault. I Yeah. My ADD kicked in. Airsoft. I, I just but um But that came out of left field. I was just like, holy shit. Like, yeah, like I would expect a polite human being? What? At an airsoft team? No, yeah, dude, that's, that's like, not holy shit. That's not how that works. No, it was great. It, it was just, it was really refreshing. It was like insanely refreshing. I was like, wow. Yeah, normally it's like ego the size of Texas. As soon as you start shooting, they're immediately screaming. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, but not not with this guy. Not with this group. And actually, none that I saw besides that one guy. Wow, <laughs> that's gay. That's good. I shoot real guns. Like, oh my god! As I, um, the day before, guy. post a video of the boss system compared to a real gun. Eh, sorry, man. It's a skill issue. Oh no, he he just he was he was, he was mad that he got shot. Is probably what it boiled down to. Yeah, and I mean, most of the time with airsofters, that's what makes them mad is you get shot. Sure, um, I'm the same. But yeah, this guy was real polite, and and again, like, so actually, um, I ended up when I got around behind the enemy team. Uh, on Sunday, um, I ended up shooting a guy in the building that I was in. Um, so I killed him, and then he was like, "Yo, that thing's freaking awesome!" Um, that, and we were like chit chat. We were talking about uh, rugby shirts, also rugby shirts for the win. The velocity systems. Yes. Oh, if I don't know how people were wearing a lot of weird shit. Maybe they're acclimatized. Maybe they're from Georgia or whatever. But I am not. <laughs> And, and a lot of people were not. And the amount of rugby shirts I saw, there was a ton of them, and they worked. And, I mean, our team color was black, so my rugby shirt was black. And uh, every time the wind blow, blew, it was like you were wearing nothing on the top. Those things are fantastic. Velocity mm. System sponsored us or whatever, however that works. Well, I, now I have to order two 
Oh, they're fantastic. Well, yeah, because I need one to play in, but I know you also approve them for us to wear when we're refing. So yeah, they're I, fantastic. Yeah, I'm gonna have to order one. They're fantastic. Um, I might even well hold off on that order because I might just buy them for you guys because they're in 96 degree weather with 80 percent humidity. Yeah, like my shirt was never an issue. Like That's, I wasn't like, oh, it's so hot. It. So when when I first got there, I was wearing a regular like cotton t shirt. Yeah, it's like fuck. But as soon as you changed over into that um, rugby shirt, it was like all your problems Perfect. went away. Yeah, it was fantastic. Um, but anyway, this guy I shot this guy, and uh, we were having a nice conversation talking about the boss unit or whatever. And then he goes, "You know what, man? He's like, my guys are in that in the next building up. He's like, go kill him. <laughs> He's like, I know I'm not supposed to do this, but yeah, dead men don't talk. He was like, I just want, I just want you to go shoot him." And I was yeah. like, all right, man. So I'll go have fun. Yeah, well, so I kind of I I shot one of them and I left the other guy alive because I was like, ah, I don't want to. Yeah, that's kind of cheesed. Yeah, I, he just wanted to hear me shoot more. Yeah, and I was like, all right, well, because um, it's fun. Once you have it, you just want to shoot more. Yeah, you do. That was a conversation I had with yeah. uh, our boy Kevin because he wants to do the same setup I have, a yeah. uh, Kythera with a gas stock, and he's like. Yeah, give me the one that has the 33 gram CO2. I was like, you don't want that. He's like, why? I go, it's cool you're going to put it in a Kythera. Like Kythera and boss system, great combo. 10 out of 10. You don't want the CO2. He's like, it's not enough. He's like, I don't shoot a lot. I go, that's a dirty lie. And he goes, no, no, no. Like I can go through a game with shooting one, two mags. I'm like, that's cool. And that'll work with the 33 gram CO2. He's like, you'll get four or 500 shots out of that. (laughs) But they're also $6 a pop. And I guarantee you, when you get the boss system, that's not how that works anymore. No. He's like, no, no, no. You don't understand. I was like, I do understand. I used to be that guy. Yeah. I used to come off the field, full field conquest, mag and a half every time without fail. (laughs) Now, eight mags, 10 mags. Because once you have it, you're just, you want to shoot more. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And then, and also when you're, when you're running quiet, though, you get a lot more opportunity. Yeah. Um, so you can take one shot if you missed. Maybe they didn't even hear you shoot. Yeah, and you can get you a follow-up shot one. off. Whereas with the boss, you, you take one shot. All eyes are... So now oh, it's like, yeah. ah, cover fire at this point. Yeah, like you um, have to go from firing one or two BBs to putting down legitimate suppressive fire on who you're shooting at. Yeah. Um, and plus, it's fun. It's, it's just, so much fun. It's just fun. Like, <laughs> take it at face value. It's fun. Yeah. Like everybody who shot it, they were just like, oh... Okay. I understand now. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. And actually, everybody said the same thing. They're like, uh, yeah, the videos don't do it justice. And yeah. I was like, yeah, we try to explain that. But like, I say it in every video, it does not do it yeah. justice. You have to understand it's louder than the video. Yeah. And the sound is different. Yeah. Like, um, but it was cool. I fired it in between a couple of buildings and it sounded like the Star Wars. Star Wars. Like, yeah. Like the, like the blank fire. It was pretty neat. I love that. Yeah. Super cool. Super I'm cool. super excited for when. There's a lot of these out in the wild. Soon. So this is my prediction, right? The the first wave, which is happening now, goes out six to eight weeks, every, and then probably another two weeks for people to figure out the wiring uh, on their particular gun. And then that's when you start seeing them in the wild. Yep. And then that's when sale, like more people are going to buy them. Yeah. Because right now it's just us. And one standing off the top of building going like, you yeah. need this. We promise. Yeah. And then like, like, I don't know if anybody on the West coast has one no. to demo. There's one in the South, but it never gets used. Um, so, so, so it's going to take a friend to buy one for an entire group. Yeah. And then they're like, okay. Yeah. Like, um, and we only have so, you know, so much reach. So, yeah, we don't. So if you're interested in so seeing the time. boss unit, come on out to Zulu 24. Yeah, we'll please. demo it for you. Um, I think first weekend of October, this was a brain thought the other day. We organize a boss system day. A boss system day? Yeah, if you have a boss system, first weekend of October, come play at Zulu. Shit. Because figure six to eight weeks, they'll be here end of August, early September. That gives you a month to get it wired up properly. Yeah. Tell everyone that has a boss system, yo, come play at Zulu that day. That would be nuts. That would be wild. It'd be like the old gas gun days just on crack. No, yeah, but like not boss system exclusive. Everyone come sure, play. Sure, sure, but sure. But if you have a boss unit, come out for that day of open play because we want to know. Oh, For yeah. science. What's it like when there's 50 of these on the field? How many cops can get called in one day? How badly can our neighbors get butt hurt? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Actually, you got the decibel meter. Now we can test out by the road. That decibel meter is here. Oh, we'll do that today then. We could, we could do that as soon as we're done. Yeah. Um see if we're breaking any laws but that's true 
Yeah. But anyway, I guess that about wraps up my AMS boss tour. Yeah. It was a great time. AMS did a fantastic job. Um, I'm glad you had fun. Yeah, keeping the numbers low is is the right move. Um, and I talked to Bo about some potential uh, medic changes and stuff. Buddy Aid. Uh, maybe not that far, oh. but but like a like a the way I described it to him was um, you have your squad medic, yeah, and then you have two combat lifesavers in that squad. Okay, so the combat lifesavers can do your first bandage, but they cannot do your second bandage. Okay. Only a medic can do the second bandage. So it's kind of buddy aid with extra steps. It it's buddy aid without allowing every member of your squad yeah. to so. So at the very least, you've got you. So, you so if your medic, people. so if your medic goes down in your squad, you can medic him if it's his first. Hit, yeah, right. Uh, your your combat lifesavers could get him back up and into the fight. You know, it, so it, what that they, makes sense though, because then like figure like I, I could be wrong. AMS squad layout. There's two fire teams, so you have a CLS per fire team. Sure, you could. Yeah, yeah, yeah you could. Um, because that. You know, I I understand they're they're trying to they're creating a valuable role. Yes, the medic is a valuable role. He's a valuable asset. He's a force multiplier, um, based on getting people back up. It's just you know, if somebody gets a lucky shot, and now your your medic's down. Your and medic's now the down. Entire you have squad. zero. You have yeah. zero chance of getting him back up unless yeah. unless you're supported by another squad, and that's not always the case. You know? Yeah, and so we noticed least, that at MUTC. So so at least getting. A potential second chance, um, and now and now limiting the combat lifesavers to only being able to apply the first. Yeah, I like that. Right now, now they don't just become full fledged medics. They just they can they can provide this one role. Um, there's two of them just in case you know one of them goes down. That way your medics took it up. Yeah, um, it's a it's a good compromise. And I I talked to him a little bit about that. We'll see. What, it could uh, help with the flow of the game. Could yeah potentially, um, and because I told him. Uh, you know, I was talking to him Saturday evening. I found him out on the field, and um, and I was like, I have been revived by a medic once. I've died a bunch. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, I think that was something we talked about at MUTC too. Was like, out of that entire game, I got medic like twice. Yeah, yeah, because they're just never around. Yeah, and and the thought process is, you know, as a team or as a group, you need to be like, hey, medic you're the medic stick with us and we'll yeah. all stick together but it just doesn't happen in real life you know yeah. um because everybody wants their airsoft glory moment sure i mean it happened with our group we had like 16 dudes and i think i i played with jojo ronnie and in myself to be fair we knew that was going to happen well yeah like, yeah like the old heads you know um so we never had a medic with us it would have been great if you did or, or even just combat lifesaver yeah um because that would have sustained you guys longer. Just a little bit. Yeah. And it wouldn't and I don't think it would have really affected any of the fights we got into. Um it could have made them better. Correct. It wouldn't have negatively affected them for the guys shooting at us. Yeah. We, you know, they would have just been like, oh, they got Cuz you still have to take that time to wrap that ace bandage on. Yeah, and I I get it. I understand why they do the 4 foot thing. The time it time. takes. Time. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a time sink. And it and it works. It's a good idea, actually. Um, we're all you can used, only wrap that so fast. Yeah, yeah, and it's annoying, yeah. and it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? And, it, and it's I think it's a good system. Um, we've all gotten used to the Milson West tourniquets, and and you can cheese those. Like, oh, that takes five seconds. Yeah, yeah, you can cheese those so hard. Yeah, with an ace bandage, you gotta fucking unroll it, and it's like floppy, and like it takes a minute. It yeah. takes a minute, and, and then uh, you're in the middle of running around, and that ace bandage you had on is now fucking flying off, and you got this two foot strand hanging. Well, off. They, you the way you wrap it. You got to tuck both ends. Like that's part of the thing is you wrap it and you got to tuck it. Oh, it still came undone for me last yeah. year. So, um, sounds so good. so it was good. In, in, in a mountain environment, it worked great. Um, cause you could just pull people back and do a little like CCP type thing. Yeah, that would work really well. Actually, <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was fun. It was good. All right. So, but anyway, overall good experience. Yeah, A plus. A plus. I dude, my only experience at Guardian Center was shit poo poo caca f- fucking waste of money. Yeah. And and this completely turned it like I actually saw the entire AO. I fought everywhere. 
I don't think I've done that. Yeah, yet. I yeah. saw it everywhere. I know, like, I went into buildings and it was just like, oh wow, this is this one's different than that one. And yeah, they're not all the like, same layout. Like, like I, I saw all of the AO. I mean, we fought over by like the little soccer field thing. Oh, and then, like, that area is fun. And then like uh, the trailer park thing, and then the, well, we were in those two buildings, like down off the side, and then the. Um, I saw some photos. I know you guys experienced the flood zone. Oh yeah, we we cleared out the flood zone like two or three times, yeah. and the tree line behind the flood zone, and like I saw the entire area. It was great. It was great, and and I think, I think if they would have had eight hundred people there, it would have been the same thing. He's like established front line. Nobody moves for the rest of the weekend. Whereas, yeah, because we had some friends that did the Guardian Center game last year for AMS, and that's how it was. Yeah, because they had eight hundred people. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know where the where the floor is in terms of players, because if you give, go too low, you'll never see anybody. Because there's just too many interior rooms. You figure 400, it's 200 on 200. I dude, in my head, the the floor. I think a 150 on 150 would would run pretty well. I don't know anything lower than that. Yeah, but then you you hit that that point where attrition could be a problem. Oh sure, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Then Sunday you've got 60, 60 people, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then it's just like it's like it's it's hide and seek at that point. It, yeah. It's just open play to Kuleo then. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. I don't, I actually I don't know how many people were there. I I know they said they only sold two fifty per side. So that's five hundred. That's not bad. It didn't feel that bad. It dude, it, it really didn't feel bad at all. So I don't know. They could go down to two hundred per side or one seventy five or something like that. I mean, I would. I told Bo, I was like, I would pay more money. Well, yeah, you and I have been saying that for years now. Yeah. We would pay more money to go to a game with less players. Yeah, the experience is better. Yeah, I would pay five hundred dollars to go to a game at Guardian Center if it was one hundred and fifty on one hundred and fifty. Yeah, twenty four hours straight in 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 February. Oh yeah, December <laughs> or February, your yeah. choice. Yeah. yeah, no, it's got to be not Heat Cas City. I mean, even September, you you could probably do it in September or October. So the the first MSW game we went to there in 2016 was November. It was like second week in November. Yeah, this shouldn't be too bad. And it was like 70 degrees during the day and like 55 at night. It was beautiful. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, like just cool enough at night that you needed like a warming layer, but warm enough during the day where like a BDU top was okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that place would be badass. Yeah. Dude. But... All right, we'll wrap it up here. Yeah. Uh, that's all we got for you guys. Jordan, thanks for hanging out. No problem. Thank you for coming out. And uh, Homeless Podcast Studio for yeah. another episode. I Honestly, I like this. It's not bad. As long as we can plan the weather, which we can never plan the weather. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. But uh, good night. God bless her out.